8 a.m., the runners arrive. Some have come on foot, others on the UTMB buses, but they all have a rendezvous on the square in Orsières. For many, it is the first participation in a race of 58 kilometers. Each one savors the chance of being on the starting line due to the number of candidates requesting a place a draw had been necessary, despite the fact that they all had the required number of qualifying points. This supplementary pressure adds to everybody's concentration and all methods are good for overcoming apprehension and channeling emotion. We are on the starting line this morning. We are going to get a bit wet. It's the first time that I'm participating in a race like this in the rain. I've never run in the rain, so it's a first for me today. We are going to try and manage it, finish the race and enjoy ourselves. There are runners from all over the world in the lineup. Some are icons, others unknown, but they are all going to share the same adventure. Monsieur de Rossi, for the words of welcome, once again, thank you for welcoming us for the start of the fourth OCC race. Two words to say thank you. Thank you for honouring us for having chosen this race. We are proud to be able to welcome you here in the heart of the old town of Orsier. And then above all, bravo, because we are told that it's the smallest sister, the shortest UTMB race. But I have to tell you that being on the starting line of a 56 kilometer race deserves respect. So bravo and thank you. I wish you all success. Long live Orsier, long live the OCC, and above all, see you in Chamonix. At Son La Prose, each year we normally meet the school children who have come to encourage the runners as they pass, but today, with the rain, this year it is more discreet. These runners are, for the most part, going to run a distance superior to that of a marathon for the first time, with the addition of 3,500 metres of ascent and the acceptance that they are going to get wet. First stage along the Lac de Champex, Robin Cate, Nicolas Perrier, the smiley Emily Forsberg, and all the others who are facing the next difficulty, the climb up to La Giette.
Allez, Baro Passage over the Col de la Forclaz. The rain has not discouraged the public. The runners are autonomous throughout the race, but they can count on the refreshment post. These are important areas where they can find reassurance and organisation before, again, making an effort as they set off in the rain. Elle est super bonne aussi. Mieux que l'an dernier alors Ah ouais, il fait moins chaud, mais bien. C'est un temps pour moi ça. Parfait. Comment ça va Ça va Mouillé, mais ça va. On est prêt pour une grenouille. On va faire vite. On va faire de temps. avant le col des montées donc euh, le soit qui va basculer euh, après les, le col des montées je pense qu'il a, a de grandes chances de gagner. The Swede is the first woman to enter the Valorcine refreshment zone. Upon leaving, she passes the French woman as she arrives, followed by the Spaniard Amandine Ferrato, who, without stopping, continues the race in Emily's footsteps. After Valorcine, the course becomes more intense. For the women, it is a key part of the race where the final ranking is at play.
The ambience for the runners is still good natured between encouragements, refreshments, and the landscape. There, one must speak a little English, a lot of Spanish, but I don't know any Swedish. And then there is a team of supporters up there, exceptional. The public is still there, under the rain from the beginning of the last difficulty, the 900 metres climb up to Flegere before going back down to Chamonix. All move forward in a profusion of greens, of mud, and with wet smiles in such monsoon-like weather conditions. Oh. <laughs> 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 